What's the word, y'all? We're here. It happened. It finally happened. All day we we had idea. We knew he was going to be traded today. But if I'm being honest with you, this is a curveball because I was pretty sure that Philly was the move. Because in my mind, a package revolving around Ben Simmons is a lot better than what they ended up getting. Be sure to leave a like on the video. Subscribe if you are new. I'm going to be giving my personal opinions, immediate reaction dealing with this trade. Immediate reaction. This could change two months, three months down the line, but I know y'all love for me to come out here moments after the trade and think and tell you what I think about it. Um, I'm not going to tell you what to think about it because there are some teams in here that I've seen both sides of the coin. I've seen some Pacers fans saying they are in pain and other Pacers fans super happy. So I'm not here to tell you how to feel if you're associated with these four teams that were, that were in this trade, but I'm going to tell you what I think. And you may disagree with completely, completely okay. Let me fill you in. James Harden was traded. You know, James Harden was traded, and it seemed like maybe either, either the Ben Simmons rumors were completely false and were used to get six more first-round picks or whatever, or Daryl Moore was like, we're not giving up Maxi. Like, was Maxi the determining factor in Philly not doing this deal? I don't know. Let me tell you. So the Rockets are ending this trade. Listen to me. For James Harden, they get back Victor Lodipo, Dante Exum, Rodney Kurutz, Three unprotected first-round picks as 2022, 20, 24, and 26. A Milwaukee pick for 2022 that is unprotected. And four pick swaps from 21, 23, 25, and 27. So they're walking out of here with a ton, and I mean a ton of draft capital for James Harden. And I expected nothing less for a guy of his caliber. We have to remember, though this season has been weird for him, he didn't really care, so he's only averaging like 20-something points per game. He's a guy that's always in top three MVP conversations, and you're getting rid of him. Now, I've been seeing people parallel it to like when Kevin Garnett and um, Kevin Garnett and Paul Pierce were traded to Brooklyn and they got back so many unprotected picks that turned into Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, and all these other things. I don't want to go that far. And again, this is only my initial reaction. So maybe five years down the line, it turns into that. But I don't want to go that far because when you think about it on paper, bro, and we'll see how it goes because on paper is never obviously the, the end all be all. Kevin Durant and James Harden back together. And eventually, you're going to get Kyrie. At least that's what we think. We don't really know. It's ridiculous. Now, of course, they gave up a lot with all of those picks, with Karis LeVert being in it and throwing in Jared Allen. So their depth kind of takes a hit here. And DeAndre Jordan is going to get relied on a lot more. We're talking about DeAndre Jordan was a DMP coach's decision a few days ago. Like, he had completely fallen out of the rotation. They was giving all of the love to Jared Allen, and now he's completely gone. So they're looking at a lineup of something like, is Bruce Brown still in the lineup? I would love to see Bruce Brown still in the lineup, but it's not going to be. So it's probably going to be Kyrie, James Harden, Joe Harris, Kevin Durant, and DeAndre Jordan. And if I'm being honest with you, of course they're a championship contender just by the sure offensive ability. But I'm still afraid about their defense. That will not go away. They did not fix that problem. If anything, it got worse with now losing Jared Allen and getting DeAndre Jordan. But this is a type of superstar team that may be able to overlook that and still just outscore everybody every single night. So I understand why the, the Brooklyn Nets do this, right? You only have a few years left of Kevin Durant, and you want to win a championship. It's something that you haven't done since you've been in Brooklyn. I understand wanting to get James Harden. But they got rid of a lot. They sacrificed a lot to make this happen for one and a half years, or maybe it's two years with a player option of James Harden. Luckily for, for them, we know that James Harden wants to play there because he was one of the teams on their list. But this is this is this is kind of crazy. So let's talk about Houston's return because yes, we know that Brooklyn's going to be good. We'll see what it looks like on the court, but we're pretty sure they're going to be good and going to be like top of the East, getting to the to the championship. At least that's what it looks like on paper. Um, but let's look at this Houston Rockets return. They get all these picks, three first rounders, and all the swaps, and then they turn Karis LeVert into Victor Oladipo, Dante Exum, and Kurutz, which is a very left field thing that no, I don't think anybody saw this happen. I don't think a Pacer fan out there was like James Harden's getting traded today. And we're going to end up with Karis LeVert. I don't think anybody expected that. And it is it is kind of weird to me because I think I think that Victor Oladipo's value across the league is different between teams, different between fans. But I could probably say that the Pacers walk out of here with the win from my eyes. Because if you remember what was happening in the offseason, Victor Oladipo won a close to max amount of money. And I think we can agree, Victor Oladipo ain't the all-NBA player that he was a few years ago or the all-defensive player he was a few years ago. Now, he was having a good year with Indiana. Don't get me wrong. They were rolling. They just got a very crucial win last night that he, he, didn't, he didn't play in, coincidentally. But this team was rolling. 
And they probably like, we're going to dish him off for a guy that's under contract because we don't want to be the team that's stuck with paying Victor Ladipo $20 plus million a year when we don't know if he's necessarily like that. We don't know if he'll ever get back to that. And we're going to get a young player that maybe, I'm not going to say fits the timeline more because it's not like Victor Ladipo's Oh, but a young player that could come in and fit alongside these guys. Karis Avert is great, y'all. He's a bucket. He just is. How will he jail with the, uh, the Pacers offense? I don't really know. But I can say that, like, I would rather pay what Karis Avert is being paid than have to potentially play, pay Victor Lipo. Now, we will have to revisit this once Victor Lipo hits free agency and, and we'll see what he actually ended up getting. But, like, he wants a bag. He wants $20-plus million a year. And I don't know if he's worth that anymore. So the Rockets will end up running out of lineup. First of all, I'm so surprised uh, P.J. Tucker was not thrown into this. I know P.J. is still really mad at the crib, and maybe we'll find out a little bit more about P.J. Tucker and where he could end up going because he was one of the people that was um, that John Wall and Boogie had alluded to, you know, not buying in for this season. So as of right now, they're looking at John Wall, Victor Oladipo, Eric Gordon, P.J. until he gets traded, and then Boogie. I mean, and then uh, Christian Wood, sorry, Boogie coming off the bench. And it's not a bad roster by any means, but – a trade like this is one of the the trades that doesn't put you for a rebuild, but you have so much capital that you can continue to try to be competitive while being like, we don't have to be in the lottery because maybe in four years the Brooklyn Nets break up and now we got their pick. That's basically what they're hoping on. They're hoping that James Harden does a resign in Brooklyn or Kevin Durant does a resign in Brooklyn or whatever's going on with Kyrie Irving ends up being bad for his career, right? Uh, they get a first round pick from Milwaukee, but Milwaukee signed Giannis, so that's a late that's a late first round pick. And then the Cavs out of nowhere end up another winner of this trade. Uh, they give up the 2022 first round pick that we already mentioned. Like the Milwaukee Bucks pick will be like late 20s. The Bucks will be good next season, um, unless Giannis goes down with an injury. And we'll knock on wood for that because we never want to see that. They walk out of here with a center that fits the timeline of Sexland. Now, as good as Drummond has been this year, and he's been pretty solid for their success, Jared Allen is probably the one that they'd rather build around long term. We don't know what Andre Drummond's trade value, not trade value, but his, his contract value is at the end of the day. And now they get Jared Allen. Since he's been inserted in the starter lineup, the Brooklyn Nets had looked incredible offensively and defensively. He was stopping some of the best centers in the league. It was Jokic. It was Rudy Gobert. He was just taking toll on these centers. Now they will be, they will have to pay him because he's, he showed that he's worth a lot of money, but they will have to pay him. But I don't think that's what they're worried about. They have a new big three at the end of the day. And you throw in Kevin Love, who we don't know what's going to happen. And Isaac Okoro, they have a young core that they can walk out and be like, yeah, this is fun. Torian Prince had a, a couple games this season in the beginning where he was absolutely terrible, but he was starting to get it, get it going, and he's thrown into this trade. This is going to be a trade we look back on in 10 years, and it's going to be like a 30 for 30 on it, bro. What happened? And we don't know what is going to happen. But I'm excited for it. I want to talk about the possibility of that Philly trade because that that is the biggest surprise to me. Because I think I said this earlier. The idea of having Ben Simmons as my my main piece of a trade. If I'm trading an MVP all NBA caliber player for another all NBA caliber player that is also all defensive player, I do that 100 percent of the time. And and the way Ben Simmons had been playing for the past couple of days was maybe he had heard the rumors and knew that maybe that day was gonna come. Like last night he wasn't very good. He fouled out. Um and it didn't. And I think Tyrese Maxey might have been the thing. Because as it had been reported, by, I think it was Mark Stein, that um, the 76ers were trying to get another draft asset instead of trading Tyrese Maxey. They were out there calling other teams like, listen, I'll give you this and this for a first round pick because we don't want to trade Maxey. We think Maxey's special for us in the future. So we don't want to throw him in a trade. And I understand why Houston would want to get Maxey. But... I would much rather have Ben Simmons than some of these picks. And don't come at me with uh, Ben Simmons with John Wall and these players don't fit. That's not what it is about. John Wall, as good as he has been this season, shouldn't be on the priority list of, like, building blocks for our team. Houston's not winning the championship while John Wall is on their roster. If you make the right moves, Ben Simmons could be the guard of your championship quality team one year. So I was kind of excited about the idea of Ben Simmons potentially going to a team that would, over the next couple of years, potentially build, build the perfect team around him. But I understand why Philly fans, a lot of Philly fans are probably having a sigh of relief because there's a lot of baggage that comes with James Harden right now. And maybe that all goes away now that he is traded. He'll get into the gym and that belly that he had been, been showcasing this season is gone because he's to a place he wants to go. But I understand not wanting to make that big 
move, especially in a year like this where you already look good to start off the season. Everything is gelling. And, well, is a big question mark on this year. I don't want to trade my 23-year-old or have a 24-year-old all-NBA player for 32-year-old NBA player in a season that we're not even completely sure if we will crown a champion this year. We're not even completely sure how the things are going to go. Somebody might contract the virus, God forbid, and now your path to the championship is a lot easier, and now you, you can still do it with Joel Embiid and Ben Simmons. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if this is a, a trade that Daryl Morey and them will look back on in a few years and kind of kick themselves in the butt for not being or not pulling the trigger. Tyrese Maxey would have to turn into something extremely, extremely special. And he is on the trajectory from the few games I've watched him in this year, including that almost 40-point game. He is nice, and I think he has a great future in this league. But for him to potentially be the reason why you don't end up pulling the trigger on a, like, consistent MVP candidate, I hope they don't feel some type of way, you know? I'm excited to watch Brooklyn basketball as much as any time ever. How does Kevin Durant and James Harden match a lot of people are saying, bro? Kevin Durant has been playing with all-star, superstar caliber players his whole career. From Russell Westbrook to, to Steph Curry, Klay Thompson, and Draymond Green. And he's always been able to get his buckets and help his team succeed. That's never been a question. That, it's no doubt in my mind that him and James Harden would gel well together. It's that third piece. There was even rumors today that part of the reason why Kerry Irvin has been absent is because he's not a big fan of the way Steve Nash is running things. The third piece is the biggest question mark for the Brooklyn Nets. It just is. Let me know what you think about this trade, man. It was a lot to go down. Who's the winner? Who's the loser initially? And we're going to come back to this trade in a few months and figure things out. I'll see y'all tomorrow, later, whatever it may be. Peace.